good day in today's video we're revising PUH 309 um, that's public health information education and communication and uh, you can access the notes on this platform as well just download it and we are going to start from unit 4 to unit 1 2 3 then 6 4 5 so Let's scroll all the way to unit 4 and we'll start from there. Find unit 4, the scope and of information, communication and education. So I hope you know that the acronym means, um, the acronym is IEC, which means information, education and communication. So IEC, the definition is that it's a communication tool. Let me go ahead and show you where I'm reading. It's a communication tool which combines strategies, approaches, and methods that enable individual families, group, and organization to play active roles in achieving health-seeking behavior to improve the quality of the life of life of the communities okay so i want to apologize for this is my first time of doing this if it's not clear to let me know as well so iec is just a communication to you know to get people to change and play active roles in achieving health seeking behavior to improve their health so that's just it but please do note the words there they are important communication tools strategies who are you enabling the individual family groups and organization of course to change their health seeking behavior so that their health could improve and there are many um, types of iec tools and we'll see that in the last unit okay so let's move forward sorry to the next one the concept of iec okay so i means information which includes the generation and destination of general technical information so this is what you are passing to um, the people to the community to the individuals you know to create awareness among policy makers academics general public these are the people you are passing the information they are passing this message to which is the information next is the e which is education it refers to the process of facilitating learning to enable audiences to make rational informed decisions to influence their behavior over the long term you know is the way you are going to tell them how to how they are going to learn is the way the process of facilitating learning to enable them to change or make decisions that will influence their behavior please note that um this class is a revision class so we have i've taught this already in the class in detail okay so we are just revising which will help you to remember what you ought to for your exams when school resumes okay so communication which is the c is the planned process aimed at motivating people to adopt new um, attitudes that's the way you tell them to do what you want them to do so that their attitude will change it's based on their concerns perceived needs beliefs and practice you know it's a two-way system the um the sender and the the receiver we get to see that in unit five and all that mm -hmm. so next after learning the definition and the concept of IEC, we have to look at the key elements in IEC. And we have there are five. IEC aims to achieve measurable behavior and, and attitude change among specific audience. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Based on the needs of well-defined and well-researched audience. So you have to find out the audience you are trying to pass on that information, that particular information you want to pass on. And you just go like that. You have to define them and you have to research the audience so that you know their needs. Requires planned and multicultural interventions which combine I, um, information, education, and motivational processes. It needs to be well synchronized and articulated with the provision of relevant products. It requires multidisciplinary skills and mebro techniques and methods from various departments. Um, 
discipline. So it's not just health. It borrows um, techniques from education and all that, you know, the way you teach and can combine from various disciplines just to pass the information to get people to change their health-seeking behavior. So what can IEC do for a health program? So if the service delivery system is put in place properly, it will increase high level political support, you know, get those politicians to change the rules, policy makers to be able to get, make policies that actually solve the problem in the community to gain public support, institutional response as well, which is needed for the program. It also increased program planners and managers' awareness and knowledge of constraints faced by service users and service providers. It will increase the demand for services. You know, people will now, for example, family planning, the more they know about it, the more they can ask for it fostering the adoption by the individuals or families of desired practices and behaviors, you know, help them to get to use family planning methods, the different types, not just to be saying, oh, it's only condom, they will know that there's injectables, they will know that there's pills and all that. Country negative attitudes based on misunderstanding and rumors, you know, people that have the incorrect belief that oral pill makes young women style. So by the time you educate them and let them know, oh, this is incorrect, this is how it works, blah, 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 then they can now um, understand and believe this and adopt this new attitude whereby they can now use oral pill as an alternative to using condom. So teaching specific skills or knowledge, they know how to use the condom because when you are going to teach them about condom, that they can use it for as a way of um, family planning, you can't just tell them, oh, we are going to use it. You have to teach them how to use it. It improves interpersonal communication and counseling skills of service providers that are actually going to be interactive with those who are using the service. So when you are revising, please always read the summary, the conclusion, everything, and also look at the tutor marked assignment. Very important. Very, very important. So the conclusion is that it improves communication approaches, IEC, to improve the health status of clients. Okay, right? So that is just it. So let's move forward. I'm trying to save time because I don't want this video to be long. So let's go ahead to look at unit one, which is the next one from unit four to unit one. Okay, so unit one is the scope of health education okay so um let's look at the definition of health education now the major definition you want to want to see is the one by who which is for public health health education what does um, who define it as is defined as the process of helping people to learn what sorry is a process of helping people to learn what to do and how to do it right in order to achieve improved health status hmm? it's just straightforward you're getting people to learn what uh, what to do and how to do it right so that their health, state, health status can improve so it's an ongoing process and through the learner is helped to acquire health practices that will um, lead to change in health behavior. So let us look at the principles of health education. Please note, the principles of health education is different from principles of um, learning, which we'll see later. Please don't mix it up. Most students do mix it up. Okay, so we have principle number one is that all health disease or illness states whose etiology is well known have a behavioral component okay this means the action which people take to contribute to the onset and development of any disease or illness so um we should know that health or the disease illness state of individuals is influenced by their behavior so that is why we are targeting behavioral change so principle number two people are more committed to the actions and change process which they choose for themselves so you can't force it on people 
if you want them to change their behavior they have to choose it for themselves so third principle is that learning can best be accomplished in an environment where both the teacher and learner are comfortable and can communicate effectively okay for example if mosquito is biting you are in an environment dirty environment and mosquito is biting you guys and i'm teaching you really pay attention to what i have to say and as well the mosquito will be biting me so the um the environment is not um comfortable so learning is best accomplished in an environment where both of us are um, comfortable and can communicate effectively now the next is the structures of health education and we have three categories of people we have the individual we have the family and we have the community now this is the um, this levels is where education intervention strategies are often applied so you can start from the individual moving to the family and the community the individual is the basic member of a family so we have the individual is in the family and the family is in the community they are linked together so you should know that family is the basic unit of the community and the community is where the family and individual claim and live lives physically it influences the health factor and culture of the individual based on the facility and activities acceptable as social cultural practices so that's what you see in the community also i said not the conclusion is um, the place occupied by health education and promotion in the community it helps to conceptualize and anticipate the roles um, to be played that must be played and then find the needs of this um, structure of of health education so we have introduced you to the concept of um, IEC looked at the principles of health education and the structures of health education now we are going to look at the foundation theories and principles of learning note that that is principles of um, learning not health education okay okay so let's sorry let's okay so we have um three main types of behavior in every human we have the reflex the instinctive and the learned behaviors and the learned behavior that is the focus of health um, education so let's look at the functions of the family remember that the family is um, one of the structures of health education so the key functions are educational economic socialization and stabilization sexuality orientation procreation and procreation so there are there are five key functions of the family so in the family this is where the individual is taught new health concepts and skills the uh, economic um, teaching from the family is based on you know how to provide for the family clothing um, um, and other, um, shelter and other social facilities okay on based on socialization and stabilization uh, stabilization the individual also imbibes the acceptable practices of developing and sustaining relationship how to communicate with people outside, relate with people outside, how to deal with conflict and crisis and all that. Sexuality orientation has to do with how the individual identify accepts the responsibility of his agenda. Is it male? We have the responsibilities for men, we have responsibilities for women and all that. Procreation, you know, relates to gender responsibilities to increase to increase population growth and human development so all these are key functions of the family now we should note that in each of the foregoing circumstances the following takes place we in the family while this is going on so we have health practices and habits or habits are learned you know from the child the child is the learner hmm? this they start developing certain health habits for example if in your family you could eat fruits every day your father has it that he knows that it will boost the um, immunity of the body when you grow up and have yours it will be it will be passed down to your children the child learner will respond differently to 
new concepts about health, living, and lifestyle, different stages from the child to the teenager to a uh, young adult. The environment will play a significant role in the process of learning new concepts about health and all that. Mm? So, example, where code or cultural practices are firmly established for the child, you have birth and naming ceremony, child raising practices, how they bury people, you know, they believe about certain things, the religion and all that. Eh? You can look at the self-assessment questions as well and check for the consequences of these practices on the individual and all that. So let's move on to the foundational theories that we have. We have two, and the first one is the Godfrey Hogwarts theory of factors which influence learning. So Hogwarts postulates that human habits are associated with the priority of needs for performing health actions. Okay, so we had major six major factors that are here. Yeah. So he postulated that um, human habits of course has to do with priority needs of um, an individual towards performing health performing health um, actions and so it is a sequence one thing leads to another we have the awareness which relates to knowledge understanding belief attitude and habits so awareness relates when someone is aware the person gains knowledge of that the person now understands it and from there the person will now believe what he or she is now um, has now understood and will now go ahead to act on it you know develop an attitude and that will now lead to um, practices habits of the individual so um, to analyze the process of learning new health concept or concept that is issues, it is important to start with the level of awareness so that is where iec comes into play make people aware so that they can gain knowledge understanding they um, believe them and develop the right attitude you know that's a change in health seeking behavior and the practices as well so for example juvenile delinquencies what are the is a behavioral pattern and what are the activities that have led to it? We have stealing, lying, abusing, drugs, and the rest. And you can see these are the qualities that or steps that led to juvenile and delinquency. And if you apply that to good community leader, disciplined student, and promising politician, you can also say that the activities of um, that um, leads to a student being disciplined is, for example, reading. The student reads their books, the student doesn't cheat during the exam, the student, the student is always ready for exam and all that. So let's move on to the second one, which is the Abraham Maslow's theory of motivational needs. So the causal factors to the functions of the family. Okay, so functions are performed where certain needs are established for them. Because our factors referred to as therefore types of needs required and found to be necessary. So Abraham Maslow was a social psychologist, okay, that um, provided explanations for the types of priority needs an individual requires and found necessary. So those needs that are necessary to the individual. We have five of them. We have psychological, we have safety, we have love and belonging, we have self-esteem and self-actualization. So physiological, not psychological, sorry. So physiological uh, need and has to do with um, nourishment, growth and development. That's food, water, air and all that. Then we have safety, it has to be protection, and prevention from injury, love and belonging has to be sustainability of emotional um, state. Okay, so we have self esteem and self actualization. Now let's move on to the principles of uh, learning. So the principles of learning here. Yeah, it's also five. Most of these are just five. It's an experience which occurs inside the learner. It's a behavioral change as a consequence of experience, cooperative and collaborative process between the teacher and learner. 
it is sometimes a painful ex um, process for both teacher and learner it is both emotional and intellectual we'll see that in the next unit we are going to look at so principles of learning okay we should know what learning is all about it's a systematic process of acquiring uh knowledge and skills for the purpose of becoming informed and familiar with the circumstances or issues so there are different stages and uh, which includes memorizing understanding and comprehending so let's move forward to the principles each of them learning is unique to the to the learner okay so um learning occurs inside the learner and it is activated by the learner so it's unique to the individual he or she will receive the information interpret it record it and it will store and the person will store it for the purpose of recalling it so it's unique the way you learn is unique to to each um, individual then we have behavior change of course like consequence of experiences so um what you have learned you put the experiences together you store it develop skills and from there you practice it which will lead to the change your the change in your behavior then we have um, learning of course through cooperation and collaboration there's no way you can you will learn without um cooperating with the teacher Mm -hmm. So it's an interactive process like what we are doing right now, what we did in class, okay? When I get feedback from you, oh, what did you learn? Did you really learn and all that? It can be a painful process, okay? Trying to get you people to learn something can be difficult and frustrating at times, okay? But that's why it has, it has to be done in an enabling environment. So learning is emotional and intellectual. So the attitudinal, the predisposition of the learner influences or modulates what he comprehends the process of learning. You have to be willing to learn to actually uh, um, learn. Okay. So let's go forward. Conditions which facilitate learning for behavioral change. There are five again. So just note five, 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 five. <laughs> so it must encourage the learner to be active and proactive. You know, these are the purpose of learning, the conditions which will help the individual to learn, mm, to lead to behavioral change. So it has to be active, proactive. Learner must be able to search and discover ideas through reasoning. It must recognize the rights of the learner to make mistakes. Yes, you are allowed to make mistakes and learn from your mistakes. It must ensure that evaluation is done as a cooperative process and emphasis on self-evaluation, okay? It's a personal process. You need the opportunity to formulate the criteria to measure progress. It anchors self-trust. The learner must feel and believe that he or, he or she is respected through the process of learning. You know, it's not by force and all that. So let's look at um, relating changes in behavior to growth and learning. Okay, so we should know that it anchors on self-trust, as I said before, and the key phrases in this condition as follows. is a cooperative process between the teacher and the learner. It has to do with self-evaluating the, uh, the individual, that the individual will check he or herself whether he or she has learned both internally and externally self-trust is the key to dynamic growth okay so these are the principles of learning so you should note them and also the conditions which facilitate learning we have looked at uniform let's go and look at unit um, six and we should know that unit five is the last Okay, so unit six is general principles of communication uh, uh, in health education. Okay, so communication is just the transferring of a message from one person to another so that it can be understood mm? and not just being understood to be acted upon. Okay, so it's just the basic act of human interaction. So what are the process? What is the process of communication? We have two major factors, which is the sender and the receiver and is linked by the message in between them as we would see below so let's go on to the elements of communication so we have um, the who what channel to whom and effect and this equals to the encoder the message the 
method of contact, receiver, and feedback. The encoder is also known as the pe person that is sending the message, the sender, the source, the transmitter, or communicator. Okay, that is the first component of the um, element. So uh, the person receives the message from the encoder and uh, the encoder must be knowledgeable about the subject just like i'm the encoder right now okay so i'm knowledgeable about iec and i'm passing the message which is what we are doing now and you are the the receiver okay so that is it so the message message is second component is, is a piece of information that is spoken written or action performed by by someone okay it can be an idea it can be a thought it can be like what i'm doing i'm teaching um you guys um iec okay so the next thing is that you should know that the message should be um should include the following clarity concise should be complete credible and practic and um, practical okay so let's look at the channel for which this message is used to be sent okay we have language code symbols and there are three common channels open to the encoder that's me for example we are doing oral now and we have the written which is this document we have non-verbal as well okay so non-verbal has to do with maybe um like sign languages and all that hmm? includes body expression colors and all that so let's go on with um, decoder. The decoder is also expressed as the receiver, which is you right now. So you are listening, you are receiving the message that, um, that is being sent to you as for me as the encoder. Okay, so next is the feedback. And this is the reply to every message that has been communicated, which is from the the decoder that's the receiver so the message gets to the decoder the symbols are interpreted the message sent and if the message is not properly coded that's if you don't properly get the message the interpretation becomes difficult and you don't get to understand and so the feedback is either positive or negative so positive is if you actually got the message that was sent and negative if you didn't get the message that was sent okay so please do note the drawing there from message you know the channel to the decoder feedback and back to the encoder so we have the principles of effective health communication practice okay so um you have accuracy availability balance consistency cultural competence evidence-based reach reliability reputation timeliness and understandability okay for a health communication practice to be effective it has to have this um guided by this principle it has to be accurate valid it has to be um you know put there for them to see made available it has to be consistent it has to be based on their culture and is acceptable to their culture and it has to for timeliness the content is provided or available when the audience is more receptive so you have to set a particular time that they can be able to receive that particular information of course they have to understand whatever they are getting okay so you have to know these key elements and know what they mean so let's move on to unit five which is the last unit we'll be looking at in this um uh, we revising so we have various media in iec okay so we have three major forms of media we have traditional media printed and small media and mass media okay okay before that you also have to do you know know what health communication is which is a key strategy to inform the public about health concerns and to maintain important uh health issues on the public agenda okay so it's just directed towards improving the health of the individual and it encompasses several areas which include entertainment and education and all that okay so let's go on to the types of media we have traditional media of course this this particular um, unit is simple traditional media has to do with um 
things that have been shared right from generation to the, to the next um, back in those days and which is still being used today on that you have storytelling drama fable songs proverbs which are the most common one town criers okay and we have the rest there so they're important they are still used today to reach to people uh, because of its entertainment value okay so it creates the atmosphere for effective learning and possible action okay it's mainly used to address issues affecting people's day-to-day -day life such as marriage religion health and disease and all that okay so we have printed and small media of course we have the flyers the pamphlets the the photograph the billboards banner and the rest they are commonly produced centrally and distributed their own materials at least to be involved in developing concepts and illustration okay is joining on the walls building and the, the rest is um meeting place can also be effective as well so the mass media of course has made is made up of the radio the tv films and newspaper okay so radio is the most popular and <clears throat> widely used accessible media in nigeria followed by tv and uh, mass media the advantage we'll look at it as we go to it now okay so we should know that um, before we go to disadvantages and advantages we should know that there are different uses for um, each type of media okay so for if you want to reach rural rural women you will go and use tv and all that so you will know the type to use for them and if you want to reach young people you have to note the type to be used for them so the advantages of pamphlet and media is that it's flexible is widely accepted people um there's high believability and good local coverage as well disadvantages of course some are not printed well number of people who give it to is quite small and it has a very very short um, lifespan so tv of course is dynamic it's interesting high attention because it combines sight and sound okay high cost buying tv it's very um, costly, fleeting exposure, and uh, it's not it doesn't have a specific audience. Okay, it shows it to everybody. Um, then we have billboard and posters constantly doing seeing seeing them every time you look at them. They are always there. Um, low cost, it's flexible for flyers. They are very cheap. You know, and of course, it's not specific. Um, no audience. It just shows everybody. Short lifespan and it's just they can be moved it's static okay so we have drama drama is dynamic it's flexible it can move it's mobile but however the entertainment value sometimes overshadows the message and requires people who can act properly to be able to pass on that information we have radio mass use but it has low attention okay so we have workshop where you exchange ideas we have caps t-shirts which the message can be presented um, attractively however the message might not be um, read or it has a short-term exposure how do you take care of these materials and equipment especially the ones using uh, mass media you have to clean them read the instructions before use and all that know how to use each of the materials how to present a poster we did this in class how to actually present a flyer so that it can pass the message which you are trying to get the people to to learn okay so uh then we have videos used especially for real life situations then we have pamphlets which as the the way you keep them preserve them or um, extend their lifespan is to keep them away from sunlight display them in a place where people can see and pick up easily then we have funnel graphs as well. They are boards covered with cloth and cloth pictures and attached so that people can see it as uh, uh, and get the information you want to pass. You keep your audiovisual equipment dry and free from dust and run head cleaner tape over them regularly. Okay, so you should know that um, past efforts 
using mass media in for example nutrition and communication you get disappointing results okay so quality of many programs was inferior due to lack of training and preparation so you have to be trained you have to gather the required resources so that you'll be able to plan very well to use the appropriate iec tool for the um appropriate audience okay so we have looked at it you should know the traditional and popular media in your area and how you can use them for iec interventions um so we have come to the end of this class to the end of this revision i hope you really understood um you have really understood what we spoke about in class and if you have any questions question please do feel feel free to ask maybe through this platform or through your course rep um i just want to want you to know that you should continue to stay safe and don't forget to read your books as well okay because when school resumes the exam questions are already set and we'll begin with that so i hope with this you'll be able to um, revise properly and uh, thank you for your time god bless you as well Bye.